What's the best EMTB? A big question. Of course, only six or seven years ago, that would probably have been a pretty reasonable topic of discussion. There simply wasn't really a huge choice. There were no breeds, so to speak, of, of cross country or enduro, just a few motors and bikes of around 150 mil travel. Today though, the buyer is faced with a fantastic choice. Most brands now have a range of bikes with different motors, battery capacities, suspension, travel, and intended use. Which is why I want to introduce you then to this little pony. True, it's not as fast or indeed as powerful as its thoroughbred stablemate, the Trek Rail Uphill. But everywhere else, it is fast, it is lightning fast, and it's also quiet. In fact, it is so quiet that the buzz of a bee would drown it out. So that might well make this bike, as horses go, an Arabian, well, possibly. And in terms of horsepower, it's also another unique feature. 50 newton meters, thereby making this not a lightweight, but a midweight EMTB. This then is very much a new category. The EXE, a new breed, a mid assist, as Track point out. John, are we seeing the emergence now of potentially two distinct e-mountain bike categories, do you think? That's what I think, because really they're definitely distinctly different, right? And what's cool about that is that like, I think this serves a different customer for an e-bike than the existing higher, higher power bikes. I think that's a good thing. It just gives another option for somebody that's looking for an e-bike that might be more attracted to something in this weight range and this power range because it's more similar to what they're used to riding. And still for the customer that's you know wanting that high power experience, it's out there in the middle. And it's also quite different to the existing lighter weight mountain bikes. Exactly, that's the other thing too, is I think that this sits in a real sweet spot in that mid power range that gives a little bit more of the best of both world scenarios than that lightweight stuff that originally started there that was really kind of focused on just the weight. Wow, awesome looking bike, right? On this wild day in the woods. I really do think that this bike does do the name fuel justice. And as Trek point out, the dawn of a new era in mountain biking. But I guess you can ask, what does this new era involve exactly? Well, 29 inch wheels, 140, 150 travel, and a bike weighing in at 18.5 kilos. Oh, and by the way, you can actually bolt a 160 fork up front if you need to. Yes, the geometry on this bike has been designed to make it a shredder. A shredder, mind, up, down, along and across. But I think it's some of the fine details which you notice almost immediately that stand this bike apart. I mean, look at the remote, the control here. is possibly the most state-of-the-art low-key control on the market. And then you look to the display on the top tube, which is integrated, you can see the numbers on it. And of course, that silent motor. And I've just ridden up the hill and the TQ motor, this is an all new TQ motor from Germany, 50 newton meters of torque, 360 watt hour battery in the down tube there, is quite undetectable in terms of its sound when you're pedaling up the hill under load, I have to say. Right guys, I want to give you an insight into the sound of the TQ motor on the EXE. Probably the quietest e-bike I have ever ridden. It's almost undetectable. I think the wind and the aeroplane, probably that robin in the hedge there is making more noise. You can't hear this motor. They have done an exceptional job at it. Trek partnered with TQ Motors to help develop the new HPR50 motor. This is a harmonic pin ring unit, hence HPR, and doesn't use belts and gears like some of the larger motors. The whole e-bike system, which comprises of the motor, the battery, the display, and the controller, weighs in at around about 3.9 kilos. Now, that's the weight of me when I was born. And the complete bike weighs in at 18 and a half kilos, which means it operates pretty much like an MTB when out on the trail. The bike is very quiet in use and there's no lag at all when you start up. The round shape of the motor is crazy compact based around the bottom bracket. And TQ say that the HPR transmission avoids the use of cogwheels which cause friction, noise, wear and potential points of failure. 
the TQ motor, like I mentioned, 15 newton meters, has a peak power of 300 watts. It is fully customizable uh, and the motor weighs in itself at 1.8 kilos. And like I said, it, you, you cannot notice that there's a motor there. Super, super slim line. Uh, did I mention modes? Uh, now I'm gonna bring in the remote here again because I think it's the best remote on the market. It's such a good feel, really good access, rubberized, really nice touch. But one thing, I'm gonna get ahead of myself here, is the fact that on that display, you can actually see how much time you've got left in each mode whilst riding. That is a very, very cool feature. Now, moving on to the battery. We've got a 360 watt hour battery in the down tube. It's easily demountable for when you want to charge it in your hotel room or in your home. Uh, you can have the option of an added range extender in the water bottle mount here, 160 watt hours. That weighs in about 900 grams, whereas the 360 weighs in at, what was it, 1.8 kilos. Now, what I really like is the fact that the charging port is nicely out of the way on that down tube. And tracks say that a range of around about two to five hours, depending on the mode that you're riding in just that 360 watt hour battery. Lots to think about and talk about folks on a bike which Trek fully believe to be the bike that finally bridges the gap between MTB and EMTB. But why is this? Well, the Fuel was once a purebred MTB race bike at some 10 kilos. It morphed into trail, the Fuel EX 9.9 around about 13 kilos, and a modern day rail around about 23 kilos. So whilst Trek say the EXE is very much about removing the divide between battery powered MTBs and traditional MTBs, at 18 kilos, the EXE is very nicely balanced in between, bridging the divide. So whilst the traditional fuel EX has got a hole in the down tube where you put some fuel into, such things as maybe a ham sandwich or a banana, it's called actually a bits bag, Track have even made a video on it. It's good to see that they've actually finally seen sense because that is the place which is far more suited to a battery. So I think you'll agree that it really is now a fuel. So you have a Trek session for sessioning, a Trek slash for slashing corners and the fuel. I really like this a super neat and discreet uh, top tube display. It's super flush onto the, onto the frame there. You can easily see the metrics and you can toggle through the system. So for example here, you've got the 19 kilometers left in high power mode. You've got the rider watts, you've got the kilometers per hour, uh, battery percentage. And like I mentioned earlier, when you go from uh, high power, one hour 23 left and you go into middle power, one hour 53, and then you can toggle into how many kilometers you got left. So when I go now into Eco, that'll go to 66 kilometers compared to 25 in the mid power mode. But one thing I didn't mention was that the display is fully customizable uh, via the app, and you can choose which metrics you want to be the, the dominant ones. Uh, moving to the remote. Now, I know I've been a bit gushing about this remote, but it really is cool. Uh, it has got the walk mode on there. But what makes it different? Well, one of the things that sets this remote apart, apart from its low key stealth rubber feel, is the fact you can actually disconnect it. So there's no faffing around, you simply unplug it and you can put it to the other side of your brake mount or indeed put it to the other side of the handlebar. Very neat, very neat. The Trek Central app is a key part of the Fuel EXE and there's a ton of stuff going on here. You can connect seamlessly with the bike and you can do simply so many things. You can track your activity, you can tune and set up the outputs of the motor. You can even check and set up the pressures in your tire and also your suspension. And if you haven't got a pump to pump up your tires, don't worry, an e-bike will get you home when it's flat. No, only kidding folks. But what you can do is actually ride that bike home with the battery flat because there's simply no friction in the system whatsoever. Guys, I shouldn't jest about riding your e-bike with flat tires. I didn't mean that. Um, but what I will say is that 
riding your mountain bike, your e-bike, whatever bike, with the correct tire and fork and shock pressure will give you such a better experience on the bike. And don't fret, if you don't know what your base settings are, then Trek actually provide those numbers for you. I think those two things alone are really smart features on this bike. Yes, it's stick time, folks, which means it is time for geometry. Yes, these are very much proper bikes in terms of shape and size. Now, size large, which we have here, the Reach, 487 millimeters. Um, the bottom bracket, 340, which is in the low position. Remember, you can flip the uh, minor link on here, which gives you a lower slacker position or a higher and steeper position. So that's going to be stick into corners like a freight train, I guarantee you. Uh, in terms of the chainstay, 448 millimeters, 77 degree uh, C-tube angle, and a 64 degree head-tube angle. It's a proper flying machine trail bike. Just one thing on numbers, remember they are just numbers, but what they will give you is an insight into just how the bike will ride. But what I do recommend is you actually go and ride this bike first and all, to get the setup, to get the sizing right on the bike, and also just to experience the sort of silence of riding an e-mountain bike like this. Some fine details of this bike. One of the ones which really caught my eye was the weight-based range, which is calibrated once you start riding the bike. So you can either have maybe a short day, or you can have a really long day out on your e-mountain bike. Uh, yeah, really neat, neat touch. Uh, now, as you see, there's an integrated bar and stem on this bike. Now, part of the reason for that is the track are really into the frequencies, the frequencies of, of the vibration of the handlebars. So they've actually fine-tuned that to get the right feeling. It's not going to be too harsh and it's not going to be too soft in terms of the handling. You can certainly feel it when you're out on the trail. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we've got the really nifty uh, charge port there, which is out of the way, so you can fit your range extender in there with a really short lead. Elsewhere, we have got a 180 disc on the back, but you have got room to put a 200 mil disc on there. The battery is easily removable, as I mentioned. Uh, and I think a key thing to think about with this bike is actually the fact that with the 160 watt hour battery, you can actually fly with it, which is a rarity in the e-mountain bike world. Now, the thing with low power e-bikes is they particularly don't like steep, steppy ground, especially with heavy riders on them. But obviously this is a mid-powered assist bike. So here we go. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay, next challenge is this horrible routey climb. So I'm in an easy gear. I'm in the top mode. And as you can see, there is a significant difference between this bike and a low powered bike. Easy. Now, I suppose I could dress this conclusion up a million different ways, but before I do so, I just want to ask you guys what you think about the new mid-assist category. Please let us know in the comments below. And also, a great way to support, support the channel is to subscribe to EMBN for loads of e-bike content. Uh, but yes, the conclusion. Well, uh, like I said, I could talk about many things. I could talk about the new motor. I could talk about the lightweight. I could talk about the weight-based range. Oh yes, that was very impressive. Um, I could talk about the silence of the motor. Let's just give it a moment. Yeah, I think the trees are noisier than the motor. Um, and I can talk about the geometry, I can talk about the sizing, the, uh, I could talk about whoa, a million different things. But ultimately, there is only one thing about this bike. It's fast.